Self-driving vehicles are among the hottest topics of the mobile transformation. So where do we stand right now when it comes to hands off, eyes off and uh, driverless options? And what does this development mean for us? Well, I won't keep you in suspense any longer and welcome from Mobileye, JJ Johann Jungwirt. Hello, everyone. So I hope you had a great day and a great show so far. I do have to say I, I like these, uh, uh, you know, stages I like the yellow stage here at uh, IAA and uh, let's dive right in. So what do we see as the road to self-driving mobility? Um, and uh, I hope you're also interested in technology because I will dive a bit deeper into some of the technological sides and how this all works and what's needed actually to bring self-driving technology to the roads of the future. Uh, for those of you who don't know Mobileye, here are some numbers. Uh, this is a small startup of Israel, from Israel, you know, uh, from a few years ago. In the meantime, we are a $30 billion company and uh, offer products to automotive partners uh, around the world. Uh, you can see here uh, we have over 50 uh, OEM partners or automotive manufacturers, cars and brands. Uh, and uh, we are very happy to uh, be valued by our partners and have so many products on the road. Uh, and uh, it's all about safety, it's safety first, and it's all about ADAS and AV technology, which we are bringing to market with our partners, especially the automotive manufacturers, uh, but also tier one partners uh, with the big, uh, uh, let's say, um, tier one uh, manufacturers uh, which work with the automotive industry. So we are, we are born as an automotive company uh, over 20 years ago and uh, the way we see the future is actually split into kind of three, let's say, technological, um, let's say, products. Uh, we don't like so much the level one, two, three, four, five approach. So we really believe that, uh, you know, in order to make it uh, clear for customers what these products can do, how they can be experienced, uh, you see on the left here, hands off. This is the first premium product, uh, you know, similar to Tesla FSD um, and uh, other products out there where basically it's a level two plus plus, meaning you can, uh, you know, put your hands uh, off the wheel, the vehicle can do the driving tasks uh, in the operational design domain, depending on availability of maps and, and, uh, and, and other factors. But basically, you can let the car drive from A to B. I actually just came back. I gave a demo drive uh, with our mobilized supervision, uh, which is the hands-off product uh, to a journalist. Uh, and we did a 40-minute drive here around Munich and uh, great drive from A to B uh, or A to A in this case. Uh, hands off, uh, no intervention, but you still need to keep your eyes on the road and the, and the vehicle does the driving. In the center, you can see eyes off, meaning that's the next stage. That's kind of like level three, where, uh, you know, at least within an operational design domain, like the highway, for example, from entering the highway to exiting the highway, you can actually take the eyes off. You can read a book, you can do something else. And uh, the first products are out there, still very limited, maybe zero to 60 kph. We believe that this product has to offer a solution like zero to 130, so that you can really, from entering the highway to exiting, let the car do the job. Uh, it can go you know, through merges and splits and from one highway to the next, uh, that's eyes off. And on the right, this is driverless. Um, and uh, this is basically level four, level five. Uh, if you go to our booth here at uh, B21 in, in, in this hall, you will find actually two products, uh, Mobileye Supervision and a Zeker 001, and you'll find Mobileye Drive in a VW ID bus. Uh, great product uh, to experience. Now, in terms of approaches uh, on how you solve this problem, you can do it, you know, how it's shown here on the left, um, you know, especially some of the Silicon Valley players and, and others, basically, they have done, you know, moonshots for each of these, you know, steps, as I showed before. We take more the incremental approach and also taking, you know, synergies, looking at how these products can build on top of each other. And we believe that this uh, incremental approach uh, actually is uh, the better approach. We have solved kind of the hard problems with mobilized supervision, with the hands-off product, 11 cameras uh, around uh, the vehicle and the front-looking radar. Some co customers also take, you know, surround radars uh, to offer this supervision or hands-off solution. 
And then that's the baseline. That's kind of like the primary board, the primary su uh, subsystem of uh, the level three and level four of the eyes off and uh, driverless solution. Now let's look at uh, mobilized supervision. This is the hands off product. Uh, you can see here uh, the sensor set. Uh, you see seven uh, high resolution cameras. These are the red dots uh, on the car, um, front looking 28 degree and 120 degree uh, cameras. Uh, and then the corner cameras, these are 100 degrees cameras, uh, front corner right, front corner left, rear corner right, rear corner left. And then the full surround kind of fish eye cameras, uh, 195 degrees to each side and, and to the front and rear. And the front looking radar, uh, which is also optional, um, uh, but uh, it does help to have sensor fusion and uh, increased, uh, let's say, redundancy for the front sector. Some people call this in the te technology sector, you know, 11V uh, 1R or 11V uh, 5R. Now going from here uh, to the next uh, steps, you can see basically from uh, supervision uh, all the way up to driverless uh, in the supervision segment, you see three product lines. Now the reason for that being is the operational design domain. If you just want you know, highway, you can take standard radars and uh, you can have three IQs, meaning two IQ6 highs, which are our SOCs, uh, the brain basically processing all the data two on the primary board, which is identical to supervision, 62, um, and the secondary board with just one IQ6, you know, processing a limited number of one additional LIDAR and some additional radars. If you want to go to like rural and arterial roads, including traffic lights and more complex scenarios, uh, it's actually recommended to have uh, additional sensors or replace the standard radar sensors uh, with imaging radar sensors. Uh, our imaging radars, for example, have 1,536 virtual um, uh, points uh, for the front sector, so a pretty dense, uh, rich point cloud for the front sector. And uh, the side imaging radars and the rear imaging radars are a bit smaller. They have um, 384 virtual channels, uh, uh, but still for radar technology, which is very robust, it doesn't need sensor cleaning, uh, pretty, pretty proven technology. Uh, this is actually, uh, that's, act that, that's needed when you go into the additional expanded ODD. And then if you want to go to urban, you just add another SOC, another IQ6 high on the secondary board, which is then uh, similar to Mobileye Drive, um, which you see on the right. Four IQ6 high, two and two for the primary and secondary subsystem, and also their independent uh, approach in terms of sensing. Now, if you want to look at supervision, here you can see an overview, different scenarios. Uh, you know, we have some demo drives. I don't know if our calendar is completely filled until the end of the week. In case you are still here, you can actually uh, just go to C2, which is here on, on the side, uh, the next hall, uh, go to the Mobileye booth and uh, check out if you find another spot to uh, take a ride. Um, and it's handling all the scenarios. And as I said, this is hands off uh, and you can experience it. It's on the road. Now in China, in 110,000 ve 110, vehicles, the Zeker 001, another 20,000 uh, uh, Zeker 009, which is a minivan type product. They are bringing this car uh, to Europe uh, next, and we have just announced today a partnership with Smart. So in addition to Polestar, also Smart is taking supervision uh, as a product, as a high-end uh, premium ADA solution. Now, Let's take a look at some experiences with customers in the field. Uh, this was actually just released on Friday night. You can see a late reveal, very hard scenario. Uh, and these are actually customer uh, feedbacks. We had first uh, 1,000 customers or pre like, uh, better users out there before it was launched now to over uh, 110,000 users. Now here you can see some vehicles broken down on the side. You know, also here taking this emergency maneuver to drive around that uh, uh, broken down vehicle. Again, uh, here, uh, very late, uh, let's say, visibility of this triangle and the broken down vehicle. So uh, uh, this is actually a video of like 10, uh, uh, you know, different customer, uh, let's say, use cases, feedback from users. Uh, I didn't have the time now to actually play all, all of these uh, today, but you can uh, find it online. Um, now, looking at uh, chauffeur as a highway pilot at first. Uh, these are the first application. Very important, I feel, is that we have the expanded operational domain in terms of driving from zero to 130, also driving at night, also driving through tunnels and driving uh, in at least light, light rain or light snow conditions. And also here, 
you know, offering the users uh, high value. And this will be probably for many of us uh, the first time we'll actually experience, uh, you know, kind of AV technology uh, in consumer vehicles. Um, and uh, I think this will be adding a lot of, uh, a lot of value. And I actually, especially in the premium sector, we see a lot of brands uh, actually adopting this. Uh, one of our first partners for this product is uh, Polestar and uh, we're working on additional uh, partnerships uh, here. In terms of sensor set, you can see, in, you know, the baseline is like mobilized supervision. We are adding one LiDAR, uh, which you can see on the roof here. Uh, for example, a Luminar Iris uh, or another um, a similar product. And uh, uh, depending now on the radar technology chosen, you either add some standard radars or replace the traditional uh, radars with imaging radars, like shown here. Now going to Mobileye Drive, uh, which is uh, the product which you see also at our booth, um, this is uh, again building on supervision and chauffeur or hands off and eyes off, adding additional uh, sensing. Uh, so you see we have three long range lidars on the rooftop here. Uh, we have additional uh, short range lidars around the vehicle and uh, additional compute, uh, another IQ6 high, for example, uh, in the next generation product, which will also uh, launch driverless uh, a, around mid of this uh, decade. Um, and that's, that's all you need for, uh, let's say, a full-blown self-driving vehicle. I also think it's beautifully integrated. I'm really not a fan of, you know, having all of this technology visible and, you know, really for every uh, user, every, you know, even uh, pedestrian out there to see it immediately that this is a self-driving vehicle and maybe it changes behavior of other road users, which we don't want to have. Key to success, in our opinion, and also one of our, you know, USPs uh, is mapping. Here you can see uh, the, 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 let's say, the REM-based or uh, crowdsource-based maps uh, based on uh, two and a half million vehicles, you know, out there uh, sending data and actually auto-generating uh, these maps. Uh, we are receiving about 95 million uh, kilometers per day to generate these maps. And here I want to show you you know, uh, within, uh, let's say, about 10 months or 10 to 12 months, how quickly, basically, the, the, the maps are, are generated. Uh, and um, it goes from, you know, a few days to a few weeks uh, to a few months. Uh, and uh, this is the density uh, of, of Europe uh, maps. And uh, I think it's quite impressive uh, that this is auto-generated, always up to date. These are also like fresh data, exponentially growing. So that means we can have real-time updates of these maps and uh, not like with HD maps where it costs you three to $5 million or so to map a city. And by the time you are mapping, done mapping, they're already out of date. And uh, you need to do this over again um, and very hard to scale. So this will be a key enabler for scaling of self-driving uh, mobility. Now. Looking at, uh, you know, um, for example, one of the features here uh, is, is traffic light association. And um, this is also, you know, integrated into this, you know, small data points. We only get about 10 kilobytes per kilometer. Uh, very important, you know, in terms of sensing um, as, uh, you know, the redundancy. And you see four layers of redundancy. It's camera versus radar versus LIDAR, but it's also learning versus model-based uh, approaches and decomposable versus end-to-end -end approaches and appearance versus geometric basis. And uh, also very important, we call this true redundancy. So these two, uh, you know, um, let's say um, primary and secondary subsystems having uh, vision-based first uh, on the primary and then radar LIDAR first on the secondary and a very different approach um, than uh, what we see with our competitors, which do you know, full like, high-level fusion uh, immediately. So uh, I, uh, I, I, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I wish I had, had a little bit more time to talk more about the, the, the content, the technology. Uh, but it's here to stay. So we see self-driving mobility. Uh, you can you know, go to San Francisco.